Hi. Hi, everybody. How are you doing today? I don't know about where you are, but the sun is shining here and it's uh, it's a lovely day. So, um, so I'm going to dive straight into things. We're here today to look at making a knitted poppy. Ooh, hang on. Wrong way. I'm going to say, um, oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I, I was supposed it's to all right. be introduced. Right. I, I used to do all the time and I missed it again. <laughs> I want to let them know that I'm here on Friday, but I'm just sitting here. Yeah, Jen, Jen's going to be sewing in bits yeah. for me this and morning as well. So, and replying to comments. I'm just <laughs> being generally there to support me at the side. So um, I pre made this um, large poppy actually. Um, it's knitted, it's got five separate petals to it and if I flip it on the back there you can see that it's been sewn together so there are seven elements all together which sounds an awful lot but actually it does knit up really quickly and um, I know there are some out there that you can knit in one long piece but I think with this you can actually position the petals as you want to position them and then this this one has been made out of chunky wool and the next one that I'm going to make I've actually split the chunky wool down a little bit to make it a bit smaller and um, obviously you will have to choose the right um, size needles to fit your wool but depending on what you want to use the poppy for it very much depends on the size of the wool that, that you use and um, I understand that you're going to be using this for poppy appeal awareness and, and yarn bombing and most wonderful things like that which I think is just fantastic so um, anyway I'm going to start with the petals I've made two petals already here um, and Gem's going to start to actually sew the ends in on, on the petals um, you can see they're a very basic shape um, I'll give you a little I've, I've made them slightly differently actually depending on the the edge of the poppy and I'll show you I'm a I'm a bit of a, a neat freak on the edges actually and I like my edges to be really straight and flat um, and I'll show you a little trick that I use for that but this one has been made just regular um, without doing anything special on the ends of each row so I'm going to pass those over to Gemma I'm going to ask her to start sewing those in for me so those can go off to Jen right each petal will start with five um five stitches so i've cast on my five stitches ready gem am i where am i supposed to be oh yeah oh, so that just, bit there? About, yeah that's that, that right there? yeah yeah so i've got five stitches on here the first row this is all knitted in garter stitch so very very basic stitches and um, so that hopefully everybody can knit these quite quickly so we just knit our five stitches now my trick for getting really neat edge is I bring the yarn forward, so I've got one stitch left on the needle, I bring the yarn forward and I slip the stitch off purlways, okay? And then when I turn it round, I knit into the back of that stitch and that can give you a really neat edge. So on the next row, what we're going to do is we're going to knit into the front and the back of this stitch. So this is an increased row. We're going to knit into the front and the back of that stitch. And by doing what I did on the previous row, it actually does give you quite a neat ending on it as well. And then I'm going to knit to the last two stitches. And in the last but one stitch, I'm going to knit into the front and the back of the stitch. Oh, and that's just we got uh, Maria, Eileen, and Colleen saying hiya. Hi guys, how are you? Don't worry about going fast. I think we can do a three leaf. Okay, oh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my yarn forward again and slip that stitch off always. If you feel that's a bit too complicated, just knit to the end and don't worry about it. But as I say, I'm just a little bit of a, I want my edges to be absolutely perfect, but um, but they don't have to be, it's a poppy, and nature is never perfect, is it? So um, petals are always a bit wavy on the end. So so that's my second row. And then the third I'm row. Turn the notifications off for that, a few seconds, sorry guys, you, they can't see this. All right, right, two seconds. Third row, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to knit into the front and the back of my stitch again okay so we're increasing again okay and then oh sorry is that better yeah, yeah. yeah and then i'm going to knit to the end of the row this is really weird actually because i'm talking to a screen and i know there are some lovely people out I know, there but, um, yeah I and then i've knitted to the last two stitches again and then the last but one stitch i'm going to knit into the front and into the back of that stitch and then you can either knit the last stitch or what I do is I pull the yarn forward 
and scoop it off peel waves which gives me that nice edge okay so my fourth row i'm going to do exactly the same again someone's re messaging me loads of photos the front sorry <laughs> and into the back of the stitch and then i'm going to knit right the way to the last two stitches and here now I should have at the end of this row I should have 11 stitches I get to the last but one stitch and I'm going to knit into the front and into the back of that stitch and up to you again you can either knit the stitch or I bring my yarn forward slip it off pearl ways to give myself a nice even end on there okay it's, it's worth saying that um, they can watch this video again. It always feels because it's live. Yeah, you can't, yeah. But it's just it's available forever. Actually. Yeah, you're on the yeah. internet forever yeah. now. Oh, wow. Ooh. <laughs> if I'd have known, instead of going and add my head, then especially Jen. So. <laughs> so, right. So now we've got 11 stitches on our row. And we are going to knit the next, the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So the next four rows, we're just going to knit quite simply knit stitch so let's knit you Gwen groaning. I can hear Gwen the, the dog, dog is groaning in the background <laughs> so um I think actually if we give Gwen a pair of needles maybe she can have a go as well yeah. so One how's the learn. um how's the sewing going Jan yeah it's all right I'm not very good at this yeah. so <laughs> it's uh I'm, I'm a bit of a cheat and I do so it. here again I've come to the end of the row I just bring oh hang on I've gone off there there we are I bring my yarn forward and I slip it off peel ways but again please, please feel free not to if you don't want to then when I start the sixth row now I go into the back of that stitch it's just a really nice technique for giving um, your edges a nice straight finish. But um, well, obviously, if you're knitting a garment or something like that, you don't need to worry because it's going to be um, sewn in anyway. But if your edges are on show, it does it does give a nice finish. So yarn forward, slip off curl ways. There's the sixth row done. Seventh row, I'm starting here. And because I'm not increasing, I just go into the back of the, the first stitch. And knit like that but if there's any problems just knit as normal so on to the end again so we're on the seventh row and we get to the last bit one stitch bring that yarn forward and slip off ways. and I hope you can see that it's giving the knitting a really tidy edge to it if I can see it there it just gives it a really nice finish um, and a really nice straight edge and I as I say I am a bit of a, a first pot as Gem knows mm -hmm. so so on to the eighth row now start off this is great actually if you're if you're knitting blankets or something like that and you want that edge to be really nice and straight or you're knitting squares for blankets and you want the the edge to be nice and straight it's a great little technique to use and always gives a nice finish. I'm a bit addicted to this technique, really. But, and you don't have to use it just for, for garter stitch, you know, if you're doing stocking stitch, just any any rows. Bring you all forward and then sit there. So there's our eight rows done. Now, the ninth row, we're going to start a little bit of decreasing. So we're going to slip the first stitch off. You can either slip it off into the back or front ways it doesn't really matter and then we're going to knit the next two stitches together so i'm going to knit those two stitches together okay and i'm going to pass that slip stitch over and again we've got a nice even finish on the end of the row then i'm going to knit to the last four stitches and the last four stitches then i'm going to knit two together twice so I've got my four left here I'm going to knit these two together and I'm going to knit those two together and we've started to form the shape of our petal okay so that's the ninth row now the next three rows so row 10 11 and 12 we're just going to knit again so here we go my row my wool has managed to split a little bit there we go so row 10 
and I mean these will be great depending on the size of the wool you can either use them for your yarn bombing or stick a little pin in the back and wear them on your coat um I've used them for lots of different things really they even go nice on headbands it's great to raise it raise awareness this time of year isn't it so and I was just saying as well to um to the gentleman at the beginning of the video that um my husband is is ex-navy so poppy Poppy Appeal and, and Remembrance Day plays such a massive part in our lives um, this time of year as well. So it's, um, you know, and I think it's not just about buying poppies. It's about, you know, raising the awareness, um, especially in our young, younger generation these days as well. So super, super important. So now we're on to the 12th row. OK, so we've done 12 rows here. And now what we're going to do, we're going to do another decrease row. I can get, oh, sorry, I've gone out of uh, focus a little bit. So slip one again, knit two together. Okay. And just for you to know, these the size needles that I'm using at the moment, at the moment are four and a half. And I had some um, chunky wool. And I actually split it because I, I wanted to make the poppy a little bit smaller this morning. So past slip stitch over there. Now I've got four left on my needle. So I'm going to knit two together twice. So there's one set there. And there's another set. And quite simply now, the last row, I'm going to cast off the last three stitches. And that is one petal done. Okay, so as you can see, they literally take minutes um, to make, really straightforward to make. So pass the slip stitch over there. And then Gemma, a pair of scissors there. Lovely. Thank you very much. And we'll just cut that end there and, and let us know again. if you've got any oh yes yeah, slightly to the right please slightly to the right sorry the camera to the right is yeah. right there you go there Hello. we go sorry guys so then i have oh i split this you have to look right at so the way the camera's fuzzy when you're too close there you okay, go that's then. nice there i've managed to mess that up completely but you can <laughs> see there we'll stay that in so there you have got a little petal okay you've got your little petal shape there all right so you need five of these all right five of those and as i say they don't take very long and um, but you can see that the little technique that i've used has actually given the edge a really neat edge on there as well okay so I'm going to hand that over to Gemma now to carry on. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you. Oh, the black one. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, so of course. There. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Got the um, so I, I was just going to ask, ask them as well, anyone, anyone watching, if you did have any questions about that stage, let us know because we're doing great for time. Yeah. And, and you know, I think it's um, it's such a quick, simple little project as well, but really effective with the, this is the finish. another black hole that's thinner. Is that okay? Yeah, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. So the centerpiece now is the easiest ever. Um, so what you need to do is to cast on, cast on 16 stitches and then basically cast off again okay so oh sorry Gem is normally the one that does this see? and i'm normally the one that sits off to the side on a sewing machine or <laughs> doing all the uh the assistance so she's um I can't knit, so uh, I'll be back on Friday to do crochet versions. Yeah, Jen's going to do crochet ones on Friday. Oh, I've done it again, look. <laughs> right, so for five, six, seven. Well, that oh, is that better? Yeah, that would be easy for you to see, is it? Seven, eight. Nine. Now, when I cast on as well, I know there are lots of different ways of casting on, but I find this is the, the neatest one for me, is to actually go in between the two stitches. So to go right through, if you can see which way I turn it around, but if you can go right 
in between the stitches it always gives a nice neat finish to that first row so there's stitch number 11 and again I'm going to go right through the center there I know some people go through the stitch but I can never get the um the row neat with that so I go right through the center there and then you've got 12 13 14 15 16 and then all you do is cast them off it's great actually it's a really, really simple and then obviously that produces like a, a long piece that we can swirl around in the center then so let's cast off my 16 stitches you've got a written pattern we can share i will be sure yeah i yeah. will be sharing the written pattern um very very straightforward i'll try and explain on there as well my little trick for getting the neat um edging as well i can't even remember where i picked that up from but it was years ago somebody passed it on to me and then um, it's such a great little technique So here we go, it's like a little black worm beginning to um, develop here, which you can then position in place yourself at the end when you put it all together. I'm trying to make all the pieces to show you now because I'm not sure whether we'll have enough time to actually put it all together for you, which is why I think it's more important to get the separate elements made straight away and there's our little black wiggly worm which will form the center part of your oh, and we'll bring our knitting so weird <laughs> knitting's great Jackie. absolutely great so that then forms the center part of your Copy, which obviously we'll curl around um, and we'll put into so if you curl around like that look you've got your little centerpiece mm. which will go into the middle of your poppy so that's the next bit done I'm going to ask Gemma just to um, sew in one end of this because we want to keep one end loose so that we can use that to just sew in so that's for oh, you Gemma yeah, there okay and right the leaf now okay the leaf isn't essential, is it? But it just makes a nice finishing touch. I think the leaf just gives a pop, pop of colour yeah. as well, doesn't it? And again, it's very straightforward, very, very easy. So I've got some nice green wool here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cast on four stitches with my four and a half mil needles. So one, two, three, four. Okay, the first row we just knit, garter stitch right to the end. And then the second row, we're going to knit into the front and the back of the, the first and the last stitch. So that gives, starts to give us the shaping now for our little leaf. So I'm going to knit into the front and into the back of my first stitch. And I'm going to knit two and then knit into the front and into the back of my last stitch. Okay. And don't be afraid to pull it around a little bit and to, to make sure that you keep pulling it into shape. Then my third row, I'm going to knit. And I, again, I tend to slip my first stitch, probably most a lot of you do as well. Um, if I can't do my special technique for keeping the edges um, straight, that I can't hear because I've got the, um, the shaping stitches on the end of the row as well. I tend to slip the first stitch off again. That's another little technique that you can use to try and keep your edge in straight. And then knit to the end. Okay, where I can, I bring my yarn forward. 
slip that stitch off purlways. My fourth row now is going to be a shaping row again. So I'm going to knit into the front and the back. Knit into the front and the back. Oh, I've managed to split my wool there. <laughs> Great as so, isn't it? Oh, I know. Yeah, I yeah. Well. we were doing a, a sewing demonstration oh, the other day, yeah. and my bobbin seized up completely. And oh, um, you can get about the first disaster. Oh, on the first disaster, Gemma and I were, were doing a demonstration for um, a rucksack, and we managed to get about half an hour into it, and then realised the video had stopped working. So it was <laughs> Just, oh, lots of unpicking. Uh, yeah, lots of unpicking, and yeah, lots of nearly crying as well. So. Never mind, all these things are sent to try us. So again, we've got to the end there. So we've done two um, um, increased rows. And then the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth row, we're just going to knit. Can I just pause for a moment? Yeah. Uh, how am I? Just it the camera right, okay. Out. How am I turning this into a right, circle? Right, you're not you're not going to turn that into a circle oh, now. Sorry, sorry, so sorry. This we will actually end, yeah, we're gonna so we're gonna weave a bit good question actually. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna weave in the ends, but what we'll actually do is we'll sew this into place when, when we put assemble. the pocket together, okay, yeah, which cool. I'll show you in a minute. No worries. Okay, okay, so but no, that's a good question. Yeah. I should have um, yeah. then yeah. I'm gonna reduce the screen again just in case there's been any uh Questions. So that's my fifth row. There we go. Nice. De Debbie loves your hair. Ah, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I do. I do like my different colour hair. It's a bit faded at the moment, actually. It needs um, it needs topping up. Oh, here we go. There's a few comments actually. Two seconds. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll go through them. Don't worry. You carry yeah. on. But just um. Um, Colleen's going to try your um, casting on, okay. which is great. Yeah. Um, and then also, there's a comment from Virtual Village Hall um, saying that you can send in your puppies, and then there's an address oh, as well. So they need lovely. them um, by the 10th of November, um, and then the address has been provided. Oh, um, and, that, and I think it's part of a big um, yarn bombing. Yarn bombing. Oh, how yeah, so have a little that? look at the comments if you you are interested. I think that, in that. that's amazing. I love I love seeing all the yarn bombing mm. around in them different communities. It's just fab. Yeah, we got great ones in Cardiff. Absolutely. Yeah, and there's some lovely ones in Penarth and Cowbridge as yeah. well. Have, yeah, great. So there's my eight row there. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to start decreasing. So we're basically going to knit two together at the start of the row and at the end of the row. Okay, so we'll knit two together here, get to the end of the row, and we'll knit two together here. Okay, so we're starting to bring the shape. Whoop. Not very good with this. There. It's, it's hard, Ooh, so to, it's, it's hard because my brain is telling yeah. me to go the other way. Yeah, yeah. It's really weird. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just knit the next row. I know I've started putting my hair in bunches because it's driving me nuts if I have my hair down all the time. And um, my son is, well, he's 14 and he's totally <laughs> in disgust at the moment. His bunches are for little girls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make you do it more, yeah. Which makes me do it more, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so again, another cast off row. We're going to knit two together. Knit one. And knit two together at the end of that row. Do you, when I finish um, tying in the end of this, do you want me to keep a, a length? Yes, it? yes, yes, yeah, 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 nice. that's lovely. Thank you. And then what we're going to do, we're down to three stitches. What we're going to do is we're going to cast off those three stitches, and there you have your little leaf. Again, very, very simple. I mean, garter stitch is a great stitch actually for keeping um, keeping the knitting quite firm um, and keeping the integrity of the, okay. the structure. If you were to try it in stocking stitch, it would fold and it would be a lot um, harder to keep the shape. So, you know, garter stitch for doing a little project like this is is great. It's a, a much sort of firmer stitch. 
and that's not saying you can't make them in stocking stitch but um, I think for something like this garter stitch is a great choice so there's your little your little um, leaf there as well okay so again I'm going to ask Jem if she can sew the oh, in for that <laughs> so how are we doing for time Jem? yeah we're fine actually yeah 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 no it's fine yeah. So yeah, they obviously have a lot of videos that they play on uh, Virtual Village or so okay. any restriction. But right, so how many minutes have we got left? Yeah, you know, just... would you want? Do I'll do this and you do one more one red. More the camera red. was slightly off, wasn't it? So let's, right, let's do okay. it again and make sure the camera is so off. So we're going to go back to our poppy and then what we'll do is we'll sort of put together a four leaf poppy. Which yes. is um, yeah, <laughs> not not a traditional poppy, but and we'll have four made by then. So Right, okay, so for the poppy, for the poppy petal, we want to cast on five stitches, okay? So three, four, five, and then our first row is going to, um, sorry, Oh, sorry, somebody's in a bit novice and a bit slow keeping up with you. I'm so sorry. That's, um, who was that there? Uh, Bala. Bala, Bala, yeah. yeah. And I mean, the great, the great thing is, is that because this video will be here and I will send through a knitted pattern that you can do it at your own leisure then as well. I'm, I'm trying to whiz through a little bit because I'm so conscious that we're, um, you know, we haven't got the hugest amount of time. So huge apologies for that. But um, right, the first row will be knit. So let's knit, and I'm going to slow down just a little bit. Knit those five stitches. And for those of you who weren't here earlier, my little trick for getting our edge nice and neat at the end is you knit to the last stitch, and then you bring that wool forward as if you're going to purl, and you slip the last stitch off purl ways. And just make sure you've got your yarn nice and, and neat there okay and then the next row we're going to knit into the front and into the back of the stitch which is a great way of increasing I know that some people pick the the middle and the little loop up in between but actually knit into the front and the back of the stitch gives great finish so we're going to knit into the front and we're not going to take that loop off we're going to then go into the back of the stitch and then we'll pull the loop off the left needle and that gives us a nice clean um, tidy finish but we've also increased one stitch then as well so then we will continue knitting until we get to the last but one stitch and we're going to increase into the last but one stitch here and again we're going to use the technique of going into the front and the back so rather than take that loop off, we're going to swing the needle round and go into the back. Oh, do you know what I've done? Mm -hmm. I've used the tail. Oh, have you? <laughs> oh, no. That's lucky you picked it. So I'm going to go back there. Sorry, everybody. Just completely forget that I made such a stupid mistake there. <laughs> so. Make it to... So that other people don't other, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the the the, the fatal mistake of using your um <laughs> your thread there. What kind of wool would you recommend for this? Well, this is um this is a chunky wool that I actually split down a little bit. The poppy that you can see in the background here, which is quite quite big if you look at the size by hand compared to it, that's a chunky wool there. And um, this would be a equivalent to a, a Aaron, um, yeah, yeah, an Aran, a sort of a thin Aran, sort of like a double knitting wool. Mm -hmm. um, depends what size you want to use. If you use a double knitting wool with a slightly larger needle, that will give you a looser knit, but a bigger poppy then as well. So, and um, cotton wools also knit up nicely as well. And cotton wools always tend to give a little bit more structure. So, you know, if you were to use a double knitting cotton wool, that would look that would look good as well. I think the key um, is a bit of a yarn, but a stash buster. Yeah, it? it is a stash buster, and you can use what you've got lying around, which is what I've done. Um, but depending what size you want to use, if you wanted to use um, 
the yarn for or the poppy for a pin on your your you know your coat or your dungarees or whatever you happen to have on then I think a double knitting especially a double knitting cotton would be good or a double knitting would be good yeah yarn bombing the bigger the better the bigger the better which is Mm. why we've done it in in chunky so again here now I'm going to knit into my front again <laughs> so this is row two please just we'll all forget that i made that mistake yes yeah. so yes yeah. yes heather written pack is coming to yes so they just look at the tech uh, the, the chat in a, about half an hour yeah time. and i will put it on there so knit into the front and the back get to your last but one stitch front and back okay and then I bring my yarn forward and pull off there. Okay. Again, here, the third row, we're doing exactly the same. We're knitting into the front, the front and the back. Okay. And then Gemma's computer's just making some very weird noises. Yeah. So, so we're going to knit to the last but one stitch. And we're going to knit into the front and the back of that stitch. So that's our third row. Our fourth row again is going to be an increased row. So we're going to knit into the front. And is there any way of doing this with one arm? I'm doing crochet. Yeah, on Friday, crochet might maybe. be crochet might be easy for you. And Gemma's doing that on Friday. Mm, same time um, Friday. Yeah, the same time Friday. She's going to be doing it with crochet. So sorry, I'm doing it again with the camera. Um, right. So I get to the next, the last but one stitch. Knit into the front and the back there, and that's my increased rows done. Okay, so again, nice neat edge there, and I've got my shaping done then. So I know, sorry, Colleen, I'm I'm useless at this, aren't I? <laughs> Gemma's gonna have to keep reminding me now to get back in frame. So, right, so now fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth row are just knit. So we need four rows of knitting. So Four rows of knitting. So I'm gonna keep looking up now to see I'm in I'm in shot. There we go. So that's five and six. Thank you, Colleen. <laughs> You're so kind. <laughs> How many stitches missed at the beginning? We're going to write it down in a bit, aren't we? Yeah. Just go so, back. It's, yeah. It's we, just, you see, so you replay. cast on. You cast on five stitches um, at the beginning, and then you knit one row, and then you're into the um, increased rows. But I am going to post the pattern, and, and you can replay it as well. Yeah. yeah. But don't replay the bit when I went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> It wouldn't be the same if we didn't go wrong somewhere, Jen. Exactly. So I think that's my seventh row there. Let's have a little look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So eighth row now. On to the eighth one. And then we're going to start a row of decrease. Little row of decrease. So we've done our eighth row there, okay, and we've got a nice little beginning shape of our petal. So what we're going to do now on the eighth row, sorry, the ninth row, because we've done eight, so we're going to slip the first stitch. So we'll slip the first stitch off, and then the next two stitches we're going to knit those together. So we're going to knit those two together. And then we're going to pass this first stitch here. We're going to pass this. Oh, way! Ballas finished her petal. Well done. Yay! So we're going to pass that first stitch over. Okay. 
and then we're going to knit to the last four stitches and the last four stitches there's our last four stitches here we're going to knit two together twice okay so knit two together twice oops knit two together twice okay and then we've got rows 10 11 and 12 which we're going to knit so we're just going to knit rows 10 rows 10 there Eleven. Oh, it's so glad to see somebody's finished the petal. That's really yeah. lovely. That's lovely. That's eleven. And row twelve. And we've nearly finished this petal now as well. It's something great, actually. You can just sit of an evening in front of the television and knit up lots and lots of petals and um, just sew them all together when you feel like it then. So, okay, so that's my 12th row done now. So my 13th row is going to be a decrease row again. So we're gonna slip that first stitch off. We're going to knit the next two together. And pass that slip stitch over the top, okay? And then we've got four stitches left on the needle. So we're going to knit two together twice. So knit two together, knit two together. And now we've got three left on there, which we're just going to cast off. And we have now another little petal made for Jenna too. <laughs> so the end is in. Look, there's your leaf. I've been distracted. Sorry. Oh, come on, Jen. <laughs> I've been making my leaf. She's been making her leaf ready for Friday. Yeah. <laughs> we've got her in the mood now for getting crochet in on there. There we go. Okay, so we're going to chop the end off there. And we're going to bring our end through the loop and pull nice and tight. And there's our petal made there okay so what i'm going to do now um because i know that we will be running out of time is i'm going to show you very very quickly and very simply how we actually put it all together so we've got our needle and um, our poppy um here okay some people like to have two at the back and three on top you can you can actually sort of display them and do them as you want them really and um, if you want two behind and three, I know we should have another one. Just imagine there's another one there. Maybe we'll put the green one there just to show you. <laughs> but um, what I tend to do is I tend to leave one of the, um, the poppies with a thread hanging. Now, your cast off end is going to be the center. OK, so if you can see there, I'm threading and popping my... Um, poppies there so we've got the rounded ends on the outside okay and that looks as if it's a, it's a cast off on there okay now the great thing with this so easy to put together big darning needle love a big darning needle because I don't know about you but my eyes aren't great for threading needles so a nice big darning needle pop your yarn through there and if you anchor your stitches, so what I tend to do is literally just, you know, pile them into the centre like that, or you can do it however however you want to, you know, if you're laying them out, you can do it however you want, is just to anchor them in place, first of all, with a thread, okay? And then you can decide whether you want that one under there or whether you want that one on top there and then what you do is you go back and you catch them down in the place that you want to catch them down so i've laid mine out like that i know that i should have five 
um, but I've laid them out there. And now what I will do is I will just start to anchor them in place with my thread. And don't be too precious about it. Um, you're going to have a centre coming up on there as well. So just get them anchored down. Okay, that one might not sit in behind there. So anchor it down. How am I doing for time, Gem? Yeah, fine. Yeah, we're fine for time. I'll let her with her. Okay. Here's another video lined up. Cool. Maybe some, maybe some yoga, maybe. Okay. Right, so I've anchored that down quite nicely now. Now it's up to you as to how firm you want it in place. Sometimes I turn mine around and I just catch the edge of the, the petals on the back um, just to give it a little bit more structure. Okay, so you can see there that I've anchored that down. I can come back through, I can anchor the other ones down. Totally, totally up to you how solid you want to, to make that. But I'm going to stop there for now so that I can show you the centre piece. Okay, now the centre piece is another great way of anchoring your poppy in place as well. So you've got your poppy literally plonk that wall down through the centre and then as you sew, just curl it, curl it into place. So simple and it really helps to, um, to catch your petals into shape as well. So can you see there that it's forming the centre of the poppy really nicely and I think sometimes it's it's easier to do it this way yes there is a crochet yeah, poppy that, yeah. and it's it's coming on Friday, Friday for Sally Ann yeah. so um if you made a circle and um, when it's harder to knit and secondly I, th I always think it's harder to put in place and and keep it nice and in shape whereas with this way you just spiral in your little black caterpillar or black worm around and it gives it a great and gives it a great finish there at the end as well okay so there we go perfectly in place there lovely little poppy center and then obviously onto the back then and just sew your end in couple of times what I've done a few times as well is I don't know um felt you can get a little bit of felt and if you wanted to put a little circle of felt on the back of your poppy or your knitted flower or what whatever you wanted to that's so easy then to use as a brooch back as well um or you can get brooch backs um from craft supplies that you can literally just glue on and then if you've got any little end show and I do that quite a lot when I make um brooches is that I just make sure then that all my ends are in the um the, the brooch back as well um so just depending on what you want to to use them for you can get necklace um I've made some for necklaces as well um that you can just glue on the back as well but felt or or a piece of material that you've got lying around actually if you glue that onto the back um it's a great way of finishing so there's my four leaf not clover, poppy there, okay. And then we've got our little um our little leaf there that we just position in place at the back. In fact, if we've got a little bit of green, a little bit of green wool there. Yeah. So a little bit of green there. And again, um I didn't say to Gemma, but if you just sew in one end and then and use the other end then as your your thread then for sewing on. So what we'll do then is you position your leaf as you want it. Pop the darning needle through. Try and keep that as discreet as you can. In fact, probably best to go from the back. 
Okay, so you know it's in place. Secure that down on the back. And again, you don't need to be too precious about it, especially if you're using the same colour wool. And there we go. And cut that off there. Okay, this one now I will sew in. I'll sew that in, but you can see there that you've got your little poppy there with your little leaf. Yours will have five petals on. <laughs> I'll probably make another petal now and just fit that in somewhere. Um, so you can use that for yarn bombing, you can use it for necklaces, um, you can use it for brooches, what, whatever you fancy. They look great as well on them. Um, Blankets or well, I mean, you're probably more expert than, and than I am at doing things like that. So, but again, don't forget the back. Put your little piece of material on there if you want to use it for a brooch. Um, but actually, the back in itself is quite tidy um, because you've you, you know you've used the right the, the, the right um, the ends. Sorry, of the wool. I can't get my words out now. The ends okay. of the wool to sew it all together. But um, there we go. There's the back of that one to show you as well. Okay, so there we go. There's how to make a poppy. Um, very simple, very straightforward, but I think really effective as well. So, um, so thank you so much for watching, everybody. We will get the instructions, written instructions, um, on the comments as soon as possible. And hopefully, for those of you who enjoy a bit of crochet as well, Jen will be. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say hello. Hi, guys. All right. So yeah, I've just been making your mind. I've actually got a button on mine, so I've been a bit lazy. Oh, to, and, and then then that's been, an idea that you could use for these actually ones. as well. You could put a button on yours if and you then, wanted to. As well. And then the thing, I'll go through the crochet stitches, but I'll be using this, which I'll also make available to you, uh, which is a bit, looks a bit bonkers, but it's changed my life being able to use <laughs> picture patterns to be able to do things. Don't be scared off by that. I'll have. I'll, I'll go through it nice and slowly. So come and join me. Bring some yarn and I'll see you on Friday. Bye. Thanks. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Have a good afternoon.